All right, so I'm gonna do a little stick welding. And welding, just to remind you, you've got safety gear on, so your arms are covered, paint, long pants, ah, boots, solid shoes, boots, shoes that cover your feet. Um, got your gloves ready. We got our welt, my welding helmet ready. It's an auto darkening one. We talked about the electrode holder. This one looks a little bit different than our ones at school. Um, not that much different. Has a little, this is a 6013, E6013 electrode. Um, has the bare end here and the coating there. And remember the coating burns away. Oh, it pushes away the oxygen, but it also lays down a slag, a glaze over the surface, which we'll see. So I'm gonna clamp that in there. And I'm gonna ground, we also have the ground. The machine's not on right now. When the machine turns on, it's on. Um, basically these are live. So you wanna have this separated. So I'm gonna ground clamp the ground cable there. Um, and I have some bricks and I'm gonna set these aside and create a little spot um, for this to rest. So this is not coming in contact with the metal table. This is not coming in contact with the metal table. What you don't wanna do is have yourself be a connection point between any of these live areas inside here. Okay, and that ground. You also don't want to be standing in a puddle of water um, or conductive. Um, you don't want to ground any electrical lines or plumbing lines or anything like that. Um, you could work on a table like this or you can clamp, you know, if your piece is big, you can set it on the, on the ground and clamp the ground clamp directly to the piece itself. And I could grind a bevel, I might do that. Grind a bevel on this, so you can see right now it's flat. If it's really thick, I can grind a bevel. Most of the, the eighth inch stuff that you guys got um, you're not going to need to worry about that. Um, but you want a cleaner edge would work the best. Um, fit up is nice, grinding off the scale. Um, but we're going to go for it anyway. Come up here. Um, when I bring this over, and I'll have gloves on at that point and a helmet on. Um, nothing's still on right now. And what I'm going to do is um, either I'm going to tap down and see if I'll tap down and lift up. And I'll be making a connection then when it's on. Um, and two things, a couple of things can happen. We'll say three things can happen. One, I can tap down and bounce back up and hold it steady and get an arc that I can then maintain. Um, and then if I'm gonna do a couple of tack welds, um, I might just go like one, two, three there and lift up and it'll disconnect the arc. So I'll have enough heat that it'll melt on here. I'm gonna do a little tack weld there and a little tack weld there. Then I'll chip away that slag um, that's protecting the molten metal. Again, the, the stuff burning off and melting on and pushing the oxygen away and, and protecting the molten metal. So things go well. What also can happen is I tap down, I stay there too long and it's stuck and I got to twist back and forth. I can also, this is not the on. Sometimes people think this is the on. This, it's a clamp. So I could, if I can't get it off of there, if it's stuck on there, I can just, oh, I don't need to hold on to that. I can just open that up and release it. I'll get a little flash. You're going to get an arc flash there, but you're wearing safety gear. Now, the other thing that can happen is I tap down and I lift up too far. I get a, maybe I get a little flash and um, it goes out. Um, or I tap down and I don't get anything. Maybe there's something preventing it from really being grounded very well. Maybe it's too rusty or dirty. Um, but either way, the other method, I'm, the, there's the kind of tapping down method, making contact and lifting up. There's also where you kind of strike like a match and it's the same thing except you're coming at it at an angle and, and scratch it. Um, anyway, I might, just to show you what I'm talking about, grind a little bit on there. Be right back. You can see how it's been ground on the edge. Um, so it's thinner on the edge. All right, so the reason I ground the edge there is so that I have a thinner area where I'm welding. And that'll allow me to get, having a like little valley there between the two metals will give me deeper penetration. So you wanna have enough heat um, to melt in. So a lot of times if you have thicker stuff, you wanna grind a little bevel to it so that you, tape, you have that thinner edge that you're welding into and you get deeper penetration. All right? So I cranked it up to, on this particular other 86 amps, and uh, that might be correct on my welder. Um, maybe. Seems high. Um, but I've got 
two little tacks there that's sort of holding that together. Okay, so you can see one and two. And then if I take the chipping hammer and I can kind of knock off of that stuff. It would have been better if I clamped it in place. It moved a little bit. Well, you want to tack it before, you don't just want to start welding across here because that heat's going to expand and contract things. So you want to make sure that you um, tack it first, make sure that's where you want it. I could kind of change it, bang on it with a hammer, straighten it out. I could just break those probably if I put it in a vise. Um, but once you get it, and actually for a lot of you, for what you're doing, that might not be, you know, doing a series of tacks on both sides might be strong enough. Turned off the power to show this next thing. Going that direction, I'll lean slightly in that direction. I'm perpendicular, 90 degrees here and here. Um, I'm gonna lean in that direction a little bit and I'm gonna kind of zigzag back and forth. Although I'm shaking so much, maybe I don't need to. When I say zigzag, people do this. And what I really mean is like almost just no more than twice the diameter of the rod. So back and forth. And you think about it as sewing. You're, what you're doing is you're creating a molten puddle and you're moving that molten puddle back and forth between them. So there, are, and, it, and you're also feeding this in as you go along. So as I go along, I'm feeding that rod into it as it gets consumed. Um, so I'm maintaining a length of the arc of about an eighth of an inch or so. Um, and that can vary. If you let it get too long, it'll kind of break up and be splattery. Um, so make sure you keep feeding it in. So to review, that's not live. Um, what you're doing is with a stick rod and it's leaning, I'm gonna go that direction. So we're leaning from the top into that direction, 15 or so many degrees, more than that, whatever. Um, you're tapping down, lifting up, to create the arc, and, and you know, make connection, break connection, create an arc. Too far away, goes out. Stay there too long, get stuck, okay? Um, there's also kind of like scratching down, like scratching to do that same thing. Anyway, so you get the arc started. Then, you're going to zigzag back and forth as you move along in that direction about this speed or so. When you get to the end, start to lift up. If you were going into an angle like this, instead of being up at this angle, you'd be at a 45 and again, working your way back and forth. And you can, in this particular shot, you can really see that difference in the wire brush. Also, it's good idea to wire brush in between welds, um, as well as remove the flag, but I wanna show you, clean that up. You can definitely see the difference where the slag is still on there, um, this one, the slag is still on, and where I've removed it over here. So you do not want to weld back over the top of that and embed that slag inside. Um, it'll end up making a very, it'll be full of holes and stuff. So if you chip away, wire brush, clean that stuff off. You can wire brush um, in between there, but you can see, eh, not too bad of an amperage. Okay, speed. Um, whoops, uh, too hot, obviously right there. Um, and then, the arc not feeding it in. So there's a close-up of that one and then the one on the left where the it was not feeding in the arc enough so the arc was getting long. The distance was too long um, so it wasn't melting into the metal very well and it was a lot more splatter and you don't get the shielding. And then the other one on the right where I overheated it um, at the end or hung out too long and uh, burned a hole through it. Um, so those are some of the things. My typical mistakes. All right. So these will eventually get worn down, will melt or melt down. So once it's 
kind of to those letters, the E3613 are like, you think about an inch or, though, inch or so, um, you want to just drop it out. Um, you'll Otherwise, you'll end up, and you'll see the one it's, some of the ones in school are a little more beat, um, this will sort of melt away. Um, so that is stick welding. Pretty much the same as what we got at school. That machine's a little bit different. Uh, or those two little machines are um, pretty simple. They, you know, they only go up to about 100 or so, 130 amps. Um, the TIG welder we have at school um, will run higher at 200 or so amps for stick. It can be stick and TIG. Um, but anyway. All right, so remember, you can go back and grind down your welds. But if you grind them down and they haven't actually penetrated into the metal, um, it won't be really bonded together and it can fall apart easily. Um, so you want to, you'll have to go back and start over. So kind of err on the on the side of getting it blended together. So there are some instances where you can overheat the metal when welding, but mostly with the mild steel that we're stick welding, um, it's not going to be an issue um, for what you're doing. Um, then whenever you walk away from the machine, make sure you turn it off. And then at the end, when you after you turn it off, wrap up the cables nicely and clean up the area of the slag debris. All right, take care.